Hey everybody, this is John Wood again, and I am going to do another fly for you. It is early May here in Montana, and I'm getting ready to uh, fish some particular lakes that are uh, just now coming into shape as we start to warm up just a little bit here. And I wanted to show you this super effective and really easy to tie um, coronament pattern. And you can see it's got this big foam uh, head on it. That's where the fly gets its name, the top hat. And uh, it is deceptively effective. When you look at it, it does not look like much, but it will catch trout anywhere in lakes when their coronamids acted. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a fire hole uh, 609. This is a slightly heavier than the 419 because I expect to encounter some large trout. I want to make sure this hook can handle it. Um, another hook that you can use is the uh, TMCO 102Y. It's another black hook and it has a barb, but I like the barbless uh, for this particular lake that I'm actually tying these for. Now the thread I'm using is a UTC 70 denier in black. You see I just started it right there a little ways behind the eye and got it most of the way back to the bend. I don't want to go all the way to bend with this at this point and I'll show you why in just a minute. Now I'm back right up here behind the eye and I'm going to build a thread bump. Pretty substantial right behind the eye like actually crowding up onto the eye and then I'm going to drop the thread right there behind that thread bump. And for the uh, top on this fly, if I can find it, there it is. I'm using um, these foam cylinders from Wopsy. This is a 332nd, also in black. And you can change the color up on this a little bit if you want. Don't be afraid to do that. Uh, brown is also an effective color, but always use, I do at least, always use the black for the top hat on this thing. Now just cut the end of that cylinder so that it's tapered and that's going to help us to get the taper in the fly. And I'm smashing it flat this way so I can tie it in just a little bit better. And I'm going to lay it right up on top of the hook and my fingers are going to crowd this so you're not going to be able to see everything but I'm right just behind where I cut that taper with my thumbnail and I'm going to hold it in place like that and just come over with my thread, lock it in place. I want to make sure I get the, the cylinder where it's untrimmed and that's how I want to lock that down there. And then just make sure it's right up on top and then I cock it my way just a little bit. And as you can see, this thread has opened up a bit while it was hanging there. All of the twist is gone. And that helps me to cover just a little bit more of the foam with each wrap of thread. Now I just want to compress that down. And then we're going to build the taper all the way to the back of the fly, but I want to keep my thread open because we want to keep this super slender back here in the back. Um, one of the final steps is going to be to coat that with Solar Res Sand Hard Resin. And I just want to make sure that the tail end of that abdomen is really nice and thin. So I'm just going to build this up and I am going to keep opening up my thread and what I'm doing is spinning my bobbin and if you look down on it like this, the bobbin is spinning in a counterclockwise direction 
and that counteracts the twist that I get in this thread as I spin it around the hook shank. And that's a pretty good taper. You don't have to worry too much about that being perfect because we are going to coat it and that's where we're going to get um, a little bit better taper. I'm going to turn this here so I can see it better. And I want to cut this foam so it's about, from where I've tied it in to the end, about two-thirds the length of the body. Half to two-thirds. It's not really critical. You just basically want enough to keep the fly afloat. And I've cut that ahead of whip finishing it so that I can get around it a little bit better. And I want to whip finish this fly so that my tag end is right up on top because we're going to build up the resin a little bit thicker <clears throat> right up there on top. Now, what I've done to make it easier to apply is I have put some of my resin in this little half ounce solo cup so I can just dip my bodkin in there and get just a little bit at a time because this uses actually far less resin than you would think to cover this body. And you'll see I'm going to have like, that's actually too much, two of these little drops of resin and that's still going to be just a little bit more than I want. But I'm going to spin it around here, make sure I've got the thread evenly coated, and then what little excess there is, I'm going to coax it right up here, right behind that foam. That's going to do two things for me. Number one, it's going to keep that foam exactly where I want it when I'm fishing it so that it doesn't cock this way. And number two, it's going to create a, gr a glow like you would see in an emerging coronamid. And I think you can see that just a little bit. It's going to create just a bit of a halo right here and over the entire fly. And that's how simple it is to tie the body on this fly. And then you just coat it. Now I've taken some fly tie resin that is white and you can use nail polish if you want to. Just make sure you've completely cured your resin before you do this. When using the solar res resin on top of itself, you want your resin not to be cured 100% so that you get better adhesion. And I'm just going to flip this up so I can see what I'm doing. And dab that on there and it's strung on me so I'm gonna wipe it off that's a good thing about this as opposed to nail polish that's not gonna color my foam all right let's try that again I'll try not to get so rambunctious I just want to string on me there we go I must have just barely hit that with the light at some point when I was tying a dozen of these ahead of this video. All right, here we go again. I'm just going to tap that right where I want it. Hit it with my light. Now you can see it's not a big dot. It's just a little dot to represent the wing buds that form inside the shuck when this pupa is transforming to an adult. And those are very prominent. If you look at a natural, if you're on a lake and you see them emerging, grab one of those and look at it. And you'll see that that wing bud is quite prominent. Now another thing I like to do, which I'm going to do on the next dozen of these that I tie, is that you can add some fluorescent orange in with your white. And I like to do my ones that are just white first. And that way I can get 
the uh, quantity that I want in white and then I will come back and add the fluorescent orange to the white inside the cup and that way I can dabble that on there and get a brilliant orange. Sometimes the white does better and sometimes the orange does better. So you just need to uh, have a few of those along and again you can use nail polish as opposed to um, um, the UV resin for putting the wing bud on there. And the last thing I like to do is give these a very light delicate coat of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. The reason is I find that um, sometimes I get in a rush and don't get these cured enough with the light or my light is uh, my battery is a little bit weak and I don't get the full cure. I just dab that Sally Hansen's on there and that makes that finish nice and solid and completely tackless and it also makes it pretty much bulletproof. So tie up a few of these things, see what you think about them. I think you're going to be surprised at how effective they are. Again, you can change the body color on this, use a brown or even an olive thread, but black in this particular fly seems to do the best and always use this black foam because uh, again you may be surprised at how easy it is to see on the surface of the water especially when the surface of the water is nice and flat. So I hope you enjoyed that little video and until next time peace, love, and fly fishing my friends.